Hi, I'm Charles Arthur, Technology Editor of The Guardian, and today I'm doing a first hands-on with Google Glass. They're not available yet, and we're not expecting them to actually be on sale until 2014. We don't know the price, but they've gone out to thousands of explorers around the world, and one of them has lent them to me today just to try out and see what this technology is looking like. So the device itself doesn't have to have lenses. The ones that we've got here have optional lenses. You can add a pair of clear lenses, or you can add a pair of shaded lenses, or you can wear them without them at all. So let's put it through its paces. To turn it on, you lift your head up, and I get a purple screen just in the top right of my field of vision. You get the time and you get the words OK Glass appear in it. So if I just activate it again, OK Glass, and then I get a list of options which go, uh, one of them is Google, one of them is take a picture, one's record a video. It's just taken a picture. <laughs> it's voice activated, which means that uh, the first one that it picks up, it'll do that. You have options such as taking a picture, getting directions, taking a video, starting a hangout. Uh, you can do all sorts of live action so that you could share what you're seeing with a number of people. Or you can simply take a video, take a picture, upload it to your Google Plus profile. There's no other options at the moment. And basically record your life and put your life out there. OK, Glass. Google, how high is the Empire State Building? How high is the Empire State Building? And it's reading out to me in the microphone just above my ear, which you probably can't hear. The Empire State Building is 443.2 meters high, and it's also got a picture from Wikipedia. Another thing you can do is take a photo. OK, Glass. Take a picture shoots up a camera screen, takes a picture of what I'm seeing, which is our lovely cameraman. Another thing you can do, OK Glass, record a video. 10 seconds of video is all you can do, but you can extend it by touching the camera to get some more detail. You can also control the device by swiping up and down and forward and back. There are various uh, controls which come with it. It's not completely simple to work out which way you need to do things, whether you need to swipe backwards, forwards, sideways, up, down. There's a slightly unnatural feel to it, which is that you swipe forwards in order to go backwards through your history of what you've been doing. It's hard to know whether it would become something we'd use a lot. I think that uh, it's interesting whether, whether we shape our tools or whether the tools shape us. Because the fact of having to tip your head up or to stroke the side of your glasses and say, OK, glass, I think that the sort of effect that that would have on how we interact socially would be uh, quite profound and actually quite strange. The idea of lots of people in a room tipping their heads up and uh, saying, OK, glass out loud. The biggest question that some people have raised about Google Glass is not how much will it cost or when will it be available, but how do I know if you're recording me or taking a picture of me? And the fact is, no one really knows. There's no red light when a video is being recorded. There's no flash or noise when a picture is taken. So the question that privacy advocates have raised about Google Glass and whether it's really going to be an invasion of our privacy remains open. Google Glass represents a really interesting move forward in wearable technology. It's really hard to know if it's going to replace the smartphone in a big way or even a small way because there's a lot of functionality that needs to be worked out. But for a first try, it's really interesting.